So in this video, we're gonna go through just how strong different infill densities are in compression. We've done tests like these in the past where we've shown the dynamics of how different types of infills break. I recommend you go watch that video. But in this video, we actually put it in a compression testing rig with a formal strain gauge in order to test how strong a 30 millimeter cube is when fully compressed. So for the context around this video, the testing was done on a standard 30 millimeter brick laying on its side with a standard grid infill done at a 45 degree angle. The tests were done in increments of 10%, starting with 10% infill density and going all the way up to 100% infill. The material is NGO4043 PLA and it does have a purple pigment which generally does not heavily impact material properties. The test rig itself was a shop press with a strain gauge implemented underneath the pad of the system in order to define the strength over time. We did have a sensor that was only able to go up to 5,000 to 6,000 kilonewtons and that was not enough. We start off with the 10% infill. This is obviously a very low infill, so we don't expect it to be the strongest. It is a standard grid infill, so each layer is fully adhered to each other. The press is going up. Right now we're currently sitting at about 0.2 kilonewtons, but we already have a fully compromised part there, and it goes a little bit further before we have a complete failure. For those of you at home, a Newton is worth about 0.225 pounds. So right at this level, we only have about uh, 50 pounds of force before we have damage. Going up to 20% infill, obviously a lot more solid already, and you can see a lot more rigid and already blowing past the 10% infill. Before we start to have what looks like we might have critical buckling here, it's coming very close, good amount of compression and a bit of stretching and then a fully catastrophic failure, holding at that total amount of strength for a moment before having catastrophic failure due to the compression of the infill and the bowing of the part itself. Coming up now to 30% infill. This is a very common infill. Many people end up going somewhere between 20 and 30, often 25 in most prints. And you can see it's already looking good, blowing past that of the 20%. A little bit of buckling there and compression going on throughout, but ah, we have a failure along the diagonal with a maximum compression of, of one kilonewton, which is about 250 pounds, actually 220 pounds, but very appreciable. Now moving on to 40% infill, obviously blowing right past the first couple contestants right off the bat, and then a catastrophic failure at 1.7, almost doubling that of the 30% infill, 1.7 kilonewtons, about 500 pounds. And now moving on to 50. With 50% 50 infill, you would expect it to be pretty darn tough as it settles there into the jig. Now you've got great compression going past the first contestants all the way up to 40% already with the next hit. And now it's into its own territory. Very little compression, very little buckling so far. As it goes all the way up to nearly three, we have a critical failure and it drops off. A small diagonal break there took it away and we only got about 500 newtons above the 40% infill. Now moving on to 60. Of course our capacity for this rig is about six kilonewtons, but here we are at 60, settling right in there into the rig, blowing past 10, 20, 30, 40, and all the way up here to the 50 in a moment now. There we are, passing the 50% infill mark already and full catastrophic failure with debris around, a good amount of break, no hesitation on it at all, almost very little buckling, very solid all the way through until catastrophic failure at 3.5 kilonewtons. Now, moving on to the 70% infill, 70%, a good solid amount, very little air gap inside of there. Now it's compressing, compressing, very little buckling, almost no buckling whatsoever as it blazes up to five kilonewtons. Hitting five, that's the limit of the sensor at six before it completely stops reading anymore. Without full failure of the 70% infill, we hit six kilonewtons of force. And again, about four newtons is one pound. 
Now we'll just go up to 80% infill. Our sensor was no longer able to measure at this level because it wasn't able to support more than about 500 to 600 pounds of force. 80% here on a steel bed with full compression there. You have a failure and then catastrophic failure shearing along the diagonals immediately, leaving a perfect triangle behind. Now up to 90% going up, going up, going up. A little bit of failure along the diagonal there, but still taking more more force still take going still going it does not want to give up exceptional amount of force for a solid part and then catastrophic failure we should probably rerun that a couple times just to see that crash and hear the bang now going up to 100 percent 100 percent fully solid has a lot different dynamics since every layer is able to interact with each other. It's almost isotropic to where it does not fail along the diagonals. It basically just crushes like any standard plastic part. So that was actually pretty darn insightful. Almost every single infill density doubled the actual strength below it, or almost doubled about 50 to 80% increase in strength each time until you started beating up into the really high infills. Once you hit 70%, we maxed out our strain gauge, which was rated for about 1,500 pounds or 6,000 newtons, which was as strong as we could possibly do it before everything broke. For small little bricks like this, we didn't really anticipate that we'd run out of strength that quickly, but obviously we were at 1,500 pounds when the 70% eventually broke, but we're never actually able to test out what its ceiling was but there was a very high amount of increase at the solid levels. Once you pass 50% infill, it was huge increases in compressive strength because you're putting so much more material into it as compared to the lower levels where you're basically doubling, but you're not really doubling material in the part, you're more doubling just the number of lines. So you're not really increasing the strength that drastically. Whereas when you're too almost solid, when you double the density of an almost solid part, you're adding in a lot more material. You're doubling the mass of it. And we should dig into that a little bit more with future testing videos to see how the dynamics of different types of infills change and at those levels to actually create trend lines of 1% infill increments and that kind of thing. So do subscribe down below. And remember that if you make it fully solid, it's just about the same dynamics as a standard solid plastic part. But if you're down lower, really the most you ever really need is about 50% and you're about as strong as you need to be. And once you pass 70, there's really not that much difference and you'll break most of the things that it comes in contact with. Have a great day, everybody.